Hi everybody. I thought we would continue on on our Bible studies and in my, um, I guess I call it commonplace journal. The next thing to study is that I come across is Genesis 49.10. And we did the last days last, see, right there. So this is the next one. And so I set it up in my little study book and I figured we'd have at it. Grab your Bibles and your journals if you want to journal along and we'll get started in just a sec. Okay, so in Genesis, remember Genesis is the very first book of the Bible for anyone who's not aware. Genesis 49.10, it says, The scepter shall not depart from Judah. All right, and Judah is one of the 12 tribes of Israel. All right, so the scepter is, I tried to draw it. I made my scepter gold, like royalty, and I put green, like for everlasting life. Scepter is a small staff or wand held in the hand by a ruling monarch as an item of royal impure, Im, imperial signia, signifying sovereign authority. And he gives us two verses for this. Numbers 24, 17 and Psalm 60, verse 7. So in Numbers 24, 17, it says, I shall see him but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh, nine being close. There shall come a star out of Jacob. Remember, Jacob is the father who had the 12 sons and the other 12 tribes of Israel. A scepter shall rise out of Israel, and Israel is the name God gave to Jacob. Now right here that's saying there shall come a star. And remember if you know the, the lesson on Jesus's birth, a star goes up in heaven, uh, sh you know, shines down and shows the wise men how to get to Jesus. And it shines over where he was born in Bethlehem. And, okay, let's start here again and just go straight through. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob. A scepter shall rise up of Israel. And shall smite, oh, I wrote it twice, the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Sheth. Now, I looked up Sheth, and it means tumult, which means confusion or disorder. So, they're going to destroy all the children of confusion and disorder. Not being little children, being the followers of confusion and disorder. Okay, so in Psalm 60, verse 7, it says, Gilead is mine, and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim also is the strength of my head. Judah is my lawyer. So there again, Judah, and it talks about lawgiver. All right, so the next word in here is Shiloh. And that's the focus of our study today. Shiloh, in the Schofield note, several suggestions have been offered to explain the word Shiloh. The oldest trans translation renders it whose it is or to whom it belongs, which refers to the Messiah's reign and the prophecy now, epochal crisis at Shiloh. Now, epochal, I, I 
not sure how to say that. Extremely important, significant or influential. So the prophecy of this extremely important crisis at Shiloh. The, su the suggestion of a few that the pas passage is fulfilled in David's empties at the passage of its force. Actually, there was no manifest, manifest rule of Judah until David. Therefore, the text indicates rule in Judah before Shiloh comes. The reference is the Messiah. Rule in Judah will not depart until he, the Messiah, Jesus, comes when the, that sovereignty will be heightened to include the world. So they give us a couple verses to go along with this. And the first one is 2 Samuel 7, 16. And if we think about this whole explanation that Schofield gives us as a whole, it's saying that way back in the beginning of the Bible, it's talking, see in Genesis, it's talking about Jesus. And it refers to Jesus all through the entire Bible. When we study the Bible, we have to mindfully study it so that we know who, what's talking about, so that we know who it's referring to. Like some people thought it was David, but it clearly talks about Jesus. In 2 Samuel 7, 16, it says, And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. Talking about Jesus. Genesis 3, 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. Speaking of Satan, because he tricked her in the Garden of Eden. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So, all the way back in the beginning, Satan's been trying to trick people and sway them away from God. And that's just a shame. Okay, so then we go over and Acts uh, one eleven is our last verse it gives us. Acts 1.11, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So, remember in the last, when we were talking about the last days, we talked about... Jesus coming for us and taking us up and he's coming on a cloud. He's not stepping on earth. And I did that, yeah, I did that crazy little drawing <laughs> of everybody on a cloud. Well, that's what it's referring to. The disciples were standing there gazing up because Jesus had ascended up to heaven. And it says this same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So that's a good thing to think on and ponder on. Jesus, who came down and did all these wonderful things for us, these loving things, caring things, he is coming again, and he's coming on the cloud. I don't know if I remember where that thing is. I think it's here. Coming on the cloud, just like we talked about in this lesson. And he's coming to get all who believe. And we talked about the fact that we need to get right with him before he comes. Because that's very important to do. And then the next section that we studied here 
it's talking about his royalty how he holds the scepter because he is our king of kings and lord of lords and he will reign right now he's on the right hand of the father waiting for the father to say go get him and then he's going to come get us so the next thing we're going to do in the next one is Acts 1 11 note. I have a couple other things I videoed in between and I might get them in between but look for it and we'll study this note here next and we'll keep on studying so we can be prepared when Jesus comes. Alright guys, thanks for coming along. I'm glad you did and I can't wait until the next one. See you then. Bye bye.